Hey, Board Gamers, BJ from Board Game Gumbo here. Back in the Gumbo Pot right now. I am solo. I'm waiting on Jared. But I thought before he came in, I'd get some uh, unfinished business. We've got some games in recently, and we've got some big announcements. So let's get right to that. So Southern Board Game Fest coming up October 14th and 15th. <clears throat> it's coming up in the fall. We've aligned it with the... Uh, the Festival Acadiana Creole again this year. So that means if you come down to Acadiana for Southern Board Game Fest for Sobo, you're not only going to get some awesome board gaming, but you're also going to get the festival right next door. So my buddies Patrick and Cindy Newman, they'll tell you that they just walked whenever they felt like it on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. And they just walked from the convention. They were hungry. Forget about going to Wendy's and McDonald's. You can walk straight 100 yards down to the festival and get some of the most amazing Cajun food right there. I saw jambalaya, I saw shrimp and tuffet, there was all kinds of different things. And at the same time, you also get to hear live music. So you're going to hear Steve Riley and the Mama Playboys, you're going to hear all the different local bands. Um, I was listening to an interview with uh, Barry uh, Jean Ancelé, the, the retired folk folklorist from University of Louisiana, who started the festival back at, um, in the 70s with Jimmy DiMaggio. And he was saying that one of the cool things about this festival is these Cajun musicians, these Creole musicians are playing all over the world. They're playing all over the country and they're on the road constantly. So they keep in touch with each other through social media or sometimes when they're on breaks, but they're never all together. But at festival, at festivals, they are. They're all hanging around backstage. They're playing each other's parts. They're jumping on stage. They're visiting. So, and you get all that for free right next door to the convention. So... Get your badges for Southern Board Game Fest coming up October 14th, 15th weekend. Of course, the Friday night for any of those visitors who are coming out from out of town. We're going to be setting up the convention and then playing some games at night. So, you know, you're welcome to come and visit with us. But there's a special promotion I want to cover right now. Let me check, take a look at my pictures. So, if you go to the Southern Board Game Fest Facebook page, right now there's a promotion for people that are buying their badge this week. Or if you already have your badge, all you got to do is share this post. And it's a post advertising kind of a water-themed promotion. It's Captains of the Gulf from our friends at Stronghold and, um, and Spielworks. Actually, it's my personal copy. I had backed the Captains of the Gulf and Crescent City Cargo Kickstarter with Stronghold. Got both of those games in. Those are open and ready to be played over there. But I had also found a BGG Con a Captains of the Gulf in Shrink, the original one from Spielworks, and we're giving that one away. It's free. It's in Shrink, and that's courtesy of the gumbo. But also, uh, you know, Bonacore was there uh, with, uh, with Stronghold when, when the game got signed and was on the show talking about it. Also, we've got Sunset on the Water. If I remember right, that's a Dr. Steve Finn game, but it's published by Pencil First Games, and Edo was kind enough to send us a bunch of games for the play to win and also for the library. And also a couple of games that we can use. Uh, but this is my personal copy of Sunset of Water that you're getting. Because I don't want to take anything away from the Southern Board Game Festival library and play to win. So you're getting both of my personal copies, Captains of the Gulf and Sunset Over Water. Those Sunset on the Water. And those are both in shrink wrap. And the final one, and this one comes straight from North Star Studios, formerly North Star Games. Our friend Dom over there uh, is a big supporter of Southern Board Game Fest. He's been supporting us every year. And this year, he sent us a box full of games to give, to give out and to demo at the convention. One of those is Oceans, one of my favorite card games. I wish more people played this game because it is so good. Oceans is uh, in shrink wrap. It's brand new. Uh, that's not from my personal collection. you got three, three great games, and they're all with a nice water theme. It's got Captains of the Gulf by our friend Jason Dinger down there in Martin City. Sunset Over Water. Dr. Steve Finn, Oceans, designed by Dom, Dom uh, Crubber Shit. And so you got three great games, and all you have to do is get your badge this week, or if you already have your badge, share. Like and share that post from Southern Board Game Fest and spread it around. This is the crunch time. This Southern Board Game Fest is a fundraiser, fundraiser for our New Hope Foundation, and it's crunch time to get those tickets. I know we're two months out. But we got to start making plans. We got to start making arrangements. We got to start getting all those demo people. We've got most of the, 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 the back office stuff all ready for Southern Board Game Fest. We've got 
I think like 16 guided playthroughs. We already have everybody lined up. They're ready to teach. Uh, games from Starship Captains to a blinged out, absolutely amazing copy of Terraforming Mars. Some of the latest hotness. Challengers, the Kinderspiel winner, is going to be there. We have a 24-person tournament. About half of the tickets are sold already. So you got to jump in on that if you want to uh, get in on the tournament. And yes, I am providing a prize for that also. I think we're going to have a prize from one of the local game stores. And also the gumbo is going to uh, have a prize. So we've got a lot of cool stuff going on at Southern Board Game Fest. But we can only make it happen if you buy your badges and then get those free tickets for some of the events. we got a couple of new events, by the way, for Southern Board Game Fest. You might want to check this out. We've got a bazaar that's coming up. And that is your chance to win, uh, to uh, sell some of your games in your collection. Maybe it's time to call a little bit, right? Well, we're going to have a ton of games. I got a stack right over there. And some of these are really good games. Uh, games I hate giving up, but I just don't have any room. Uh, everything I sell at the convention, at the bazaar, is a donation straight to Southern Board Game Fest to the New Hope Foundation. It's a wonderful charity. It, we're raising funds for our New Hope Foundation. Uh, a, a mentorship program for um, under-resourced youth on the north side of town. And everything I sell, just got straight to it. So um, some of these are review games. Some of these games I purchased. Uh, I'm just mixing all of that stuff together and just giving one big check to New Hope when I'm done. So I don't know. I have like 30 games already called. And some of these are good. Some of these are really good. Um, so... Make sure you get a, if you want to sell some games, you can get that ticket also. That's, a, that's not a free ticket. There is a donation to buy a table, and we only have 10 tables available. Now, as many people as they want can come into the bazaar. Uh, I think it's on Saturday night. Can come into the bazaar and just buy the flea market, you know, whatever you want to buy. But if you want space at that, if you want your own personal table or you want to share a table with somebody, you'll need to get a table in advance. <clears throat> so make sure you do that. All right, so that's Southern Board Game Fest coming up October 14th and 15th. Make sure you get your badges. Just go to southerngamefest.com. Make sure you like and share that post that's got the promo um, giveaway, the ocean-themed giveaway with Oceans and Captains of the Gulf and Sunset of War. Stick around over the next couple of weeks because we just might have some more cool stuff uh, to do, but you know what? Get your tickets now because you're gonna have a chance to win the games this week that we're talking about if you follow those directions. Hey, board gamers, BJ from Board Game Gumbo here. Back in the Gumbo Pod. It's Jer. BJ. And we're playing for sure. Everdale for sure. For sure. For sure. For sure. For sure. For sure. We're playing Everdale for sure. For sure. <laughs> Wow, Jared, that looks pretty impressive on it TV. Looks Look at this, cool. man. It wow. looks pretty cool. cool. And you're knocking stuff off. Oh, no, they're falling down. All right. Jared, we got boats. We got red things. Mushrooms. Mushrooms, yeah. It does look like mushrooms. We have little seaweed. seaweed. And We've we got, got treasure chests. Driftwood. Driftwood. And... Sea stones, I think. Is what wow. All in the game. It's all different components. All but different similar components. to what we we're doing, right? Similar, yep. Okay. Mushrooms are the same yeah. as the uh, berries? Yeah, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, if you look. Deep. All right, so I played a bunch of Everdale with you. Yep. It was one of our more popular streams, is whenever you and I opened that big gargantuan box of the yeah, Everdale cool. Complete Collection, yeah. which, by the way, still hasn't made it back to my house yet. It's not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> so, t what's the difference in Farshore? Um, For so sure. one of the biggest differences in the talk is they've simplified some aspects of it while adding more. So one of the biggest things is we now have an external track that goes around. That's our ship movement. As we complete the correct objectives, those ships will kind of move around the, the board as well as characters so can move the ships. Too? And this, these points will come to us at the end of the game. So Ooh, this is just a, an okay. additional point that you can add on. Uh, also in that ship is how you get these treasure chests, which are two right points at the end of the game, or a wild resource. Ah. So you can collect them for points, or you can collect them for those wild nice. resources in order to play what you I'm interested. Want. So the way you do that is we have an A and B objective, and those objectives 
will not change until the last person switches from season to season. So until the last person leaves spring, every time you play a critter, you're going to move your boat one space. And every time you play a critter with the um, the hobo sack hobo symbol, sack, right. travelers, you will also get to move your boat. So, so if, if you I play, play a critter, traveling critter, it's two movements. Two movements. Okay, yeah. got it. Okay. So um, that's going to be kind of key is tracking this thing here, figuring out what's going on. So A is critter... Uh, buildings, which are construction, critter construction, unique and common. So those are the four that can come out of A, and then B are the four symbols. So it's okay. the um, the the oh man, the upkeep one that gives you upkeep. Right, right. Um, the red paws, the traveling symbols, and the books. Okay, I don't still, think it's the in-game scoring ones. The flower still, petals, which so all we the still scoring. do have some of the similar. Very similar. Okay. Um, your cards are going to score points, just like they did in the other game. You're limited to 15, just like in Everdell. You have five workers, <clears throat> three that you'll gain over time. You have a hand of cards that you can't exceed, just like in Everdell. So a lot of similar, similar mechanics. The other big change is they got rid of the door mechanic, um, and they went towards the golden door mechanic that you okay. saw with the New Leaf expansion. New Leaf, right. New Leaf, no, that, was it newly? Yeah, newly. Yeah, had newly. Had it. Right. Yeah. Um, with the new leaf expansion, where they went with the golden doors that were a bit more versatile. So if you can see um, here on the construction symbol, right here on the left hand side, mm -hmm. um, where is it at? Oh man, I think it's this symbol right here. But I'm gonna go ahead and make sure. Just double verify before I say the wrong thing. Well, they all seem to have that symbol. I know. Okay, so critters can be played by playing the cost shown in mushrooms, or they may be played free using the anchor token. Do so, place an anchor on any available construction in your city that is the same color as the critter you're trying to play. Yeah. So it's a bit more versatile than the other game, which was, you know, if you had the bookkeeper, you were specifically looking for the library. If you had the yeah, clock. Yeah, sure. The, so, um... It was, usually, Very a, it was usually a place that was looking for something. Like the courthouse was always looking for the judge, right? Remember? And yeah. the general store was looking for the merchant. merchant. Yeah. 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 So very similar mechanic, but in the this time golden just doors, the, the golden doors were the ones that said you can use any unique critter can live here or yeah. any common critter. Yeah, or, but they didn't even have to match, though. These do have to match, though. That, well, it, not one... They did match a specific category. It oh, said they any, category? It's a, it would say any green bit critter yeah, can go true. here. Yeah, that's true. So it went to that aspect. And again, just like the Golden Doors, where you were limited to three, you're also limited to three in this game as well. So you're only got to do that free action three times in the entire game, and there is no way to get more of these. Right. So three is your number. That's it. Okay, so... He's talking about these little... Me they're actually metal anchors. Yeah, they're pretty cool, nice, actually. Man. Pretty neat pretty. anchors. So that's... One of the biggest changes. I like the new changed. artwork, by the way. The new artwork is really cool. Yeah. They went with a similar style, but they went, you know, towards. It's not the, Andrew Bosley. It's somebody different that did the artwork. Oh. Okay. So it feels like Andrew Bosley's artwork, but it's I like. Not. See, see how it's like um, the backgrounds are kind of soft. Mm -hmm. It's almost like the portrait picture on your iPhone. Oh yeah. It's it's eyes. Uh, the critters are awesome. a little bit more realistic looking as well than they do. Everdell. Everdell was definitely very fanciful. Right? Yeah. yeah. These ones are a bit more. Um, Less cartoony, more, more realistic. realistic. But yeah, yeah. still very cartoony, still very... It's, it's cool. I mean, no, um, we don't have any pirates that look like uh, crabs. Or, no, what is no, that? No, that's a fish. That's a, a, fish. That's a throat. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, the other thing is the achievements have changed. So in the other one, you had, you know, if you had the innkeeper and the general store and you had the queen, that's how you get this objective, right? Or whatever it was. Okay. Um, and this one... It's just like the the boat, the market, where if you had four of one symbol, you can grab that achievement. And this one is the same way, but they're counter compounding. So each achievement will give you a number of shells, which are victory points, times the number of achievements you have in total. So that means if you have five achievements and all of them are times two, you would get two times five, five times. So it's it's multiplied by those scrolls? Right. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, that's, that's... So, Two times five, five times, yeah. you yeah. score 50 points, okay? I don't think either of us are going to let us do Not any of them are going to let us do uh, that. But did. that's... So, so tell that's me all the spots points. on the board here. So this is similar to the base game where yep. we're just getting driftwood or the seaweed or a, a rock yep. and a card. 
or I'm assuming that's just drawing blind off the deck? Blind off the deck. Okay. Unless it says specifically draw from the mate. And then can. two mushrooms, right? Yep. Okay. And then this one is discarding cards for that's... resources. And this one is discarding a number of cards to draw back up to your hand alignment. In this instance, so you can draw from both the bay or the deck. So that one's pretty interesting. Oh, that is interesting. But you can build right off the bay just like you can. Uh, mm -hmm. In the other one, and the other thing is there are the four spaces, but in this one there are the islands. And the other thing is halfway through the game, these will sink and go away. So we can use them in the beginning, but they're not going to be there as a permanent resource. And just like in the regular game, the four spaces they're pretty powerful compared to and those they're basic and they're spots. random, right? So we didn't know. And they're random. Yeah, there's yep. a stack of about nine of them, ten of them. So all right, and the dunes. The dune is how you claim the achievements. But just like in the other game, one. you would claim yeah. that specific achievement. In this one, you just that's all the go here and you claim one. That's it. That's all the spaces of the game. So it's very basic. If you just played the standard Everdell, this yeah. is what you would get. So this seems, seems in between. It's this seems in between the Everdell that I loaned to you today. What's the name of that one? The one that the kids. Milo play? Everdell. Milo yeah. Everdell. It's not that simple, but it seems like it's in between those two. You yeah. Know? So closer to regular Everdell mm -hmm. though. It actually just feels like regular Everdale, yeah. just from the first impression, but let's see how it plays. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, you destroyed me. Wow. 153 to 101. I did break 100. But, oh, that just killed me right there. I really should have gone after that last one, because that would have ratcheted up to, that would have been 4 times 3 is 12, and said, oh, that's not that big of a deal. 12 instead of 6. It would, have doubled the, it would have doubled the points, though. It starts to really build up. Yeah. you got to go for those things. you got to get all five of them. You do. Which is why I went after it. Yeah. I knew in the last round that's all I was going to do. So I basically set up my last round to drop these three cards. Drop this, and I paid for it for right. free with this post office. Yep. And then just pick these two guys up. And I wouldn't spend but one worker, and all my other workers are going right there. I'm being serious. Like, obviously, Everdell with all the expansions is a different experience because mm -hmm. you can do the New Leaf or you can do that one where you climb the mountain. Yeah. And, uh, we didn't do the Pro Book one together. We haven't done Pro Book together. Yeah. Uh, but you have played it. No. I have not played it. Oh, okay. But if I'm just playing Everdell, I wouldn't play base game Everdell. I'd play this instead. I'd play this over base game Everdell. I'll be honest. I'd play this over base game Everdell. Oh, man. I really, just because I really dug this. There was one of the things that really annoyed me about base game Everdell is the achievement system. It's like, man, I'm, I have this freaking clock tower, and I have this guy, and I cannot find the queen. Right. I don't even want the queen because I don't have the palace. So just adding the queen to my thing is going to give me 10 points. But, or I, I can just like go those, hunt two purples that actually combo off each yeah. other. So I didn't like the achievement cards. So I didn't really do them. The little achievement boat system, I always did that. I would go try to knock out two or three of those. Because yep. there were four or five, four points or whatever they are. So if you do three of them, it's 12 points. This feels a lot like that. But they made it even stronger. Because, like you said, it just ramps up super powerful with points. So it makes going for those pretty important. I don't think you can win without without taking map tiles. Nope. And you got to use all three of your anchors, which I'm assuming you have you did. to use all three anchors. Yeah, I messed that up. Yeah, I have because I, really I had two. That. I I built two unique buildings, purple two unique purple buildings, which allowed me to put two unique purple people out without paying. For I needed another C chip to make sure I got these last resources. I should have yeah. done that. Man. I had the one that destroyed the the construction. I should have done a cheap construction and then destroyed it. Yeah. I knew I was going to destroy it. I was like, I'm holding... I, you hadn't taken out the bay, and it didn't seem like you were even looking at it. So I was like, I'll just leave it in the bay, and I know I'm going to use it because, like, what happened Already was I, I ran out of space. Though. Yeah. That's why. I ran out of space, and I was like, it's just like the road, mm -hmm. the road car. Yep. You want that 16th spot. Or in this case, it's just 15th spot, but still... It'd be great if you're right. upgrading it to the four or five pointer, but I couldn't do that. I couldn't pull it off. I like the production. I really like the production. It feels a lot like the Everdell production. Yeah. You're getting the same. Absolutely, nobody would want to play this. Linda would just. This is this is what she likes in Everdale. Yeah. It's the combination of the cards mm -hmm. without having to dig for all the separate yeah. cards. Yeah. You're just yeah. digging for symbols and stuff. And with the anchors. Which is a lot more fun. The anchors, that's what I liked about New Leaf was the Golden Doors. I thought yeah. the Golden Doors was a really cool way to actually put out some things versus going, man, I have the clock tower. Where is, you know, whatever the, I forgot what that bat's called. Whatever the bat card, the yeah, keeper or whatever. Where is he? I, I literally do not see him in the game. 
And so they were actually able to add more unique cards in here because not every card is a pair anymore. Right, right. In the old game, every card's a pair, so you can't just have one clock tower or one palace. They had three copies of the palace and three copies of the queen or whatever, two and two. Now you can just have one and one because yep. there are no matching. Yep. It just remembering it. unique versus common. Yeah. That's it. So when as they add, if they, you know, like with the Everdale, when they expand this, which they'll probably expand it in some form, maybe a shipwreck or something would be pretty cool. Yep. You actually add like a shipwreck board or something yep. that you could do. Um, if they, when they do that, it'll be really easy to add in a ton of new cards without having again. To try to build I didn't pairs think they could and sets of cards. I didn't think they could reinvent the wheel with uh, yeah. Everdell, but they did. This is this is a better version of uh, Everdell. A base Everdell. I've told you before. Base Everdell. Sorry, base I'm talking about. Base Everdell. I've told you before. I'm not that big a fan of base Everdell. Yeah, I'm no. really not. I like playing it with expansions, but right. this is the way. This is what I would play. I'd play this in a heartbeat. Which is actually because And Linda does not like the expansions, so you're kind of stuck. So, well, this is good for her, though. This this is, that's is what, what I was thinking. Like, this is perfect because it was... She won't even remember. She'll be like, oh, this is the game I remember. This is what yeah. she remembers playing. Yeah. So, It's great. It's great. Yep. Per it's really well done. I Two thumbs it. from us. We're both Everdell expansion fans. He loves Everdell, but to me, this replaces Everdell. Oh, there it is. Who's that? Thank you for checking in. It says, friends and I say this would be our travel version of Everdell. I agree. One box instead of bringing all those boxes. I That's agree. why I never see it anymore because he, because Jared doesn't want to bring that big old box. It does. I also don't want him to take the box back. <laughs> I'm not going to. It's, <laughs> he likes Everdell. He likes all those things. But I do want to play the uh, Pro Book with you because I played Pro Book mm -hmm. so long ago, I feel like I'd play it a lot better than I did last time. Yeah. So. Yeah, thank you for checking in. This is a uh, I two thumbs up for me. This Everdell is Everdell for sure. No, Everdell far sure is for sure the way I will play it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't see any reason to to or, get base Everdell at this point. This is a better version of base Everdell. It's a it's a better implementation. 